Welcome to the Sakella Liza Gymnasium. I'm Ricardo Lightboard and boy, do we have a show for you tonight. It features two teams that have come quite a ways to get to this year's Final Field Game of Basketball Tournament. The Jack Hammond Wildcats and the Sea Hackerson Grabbers who will come into this game looking to basically stay on top for the remainder of the year and call themselves the number one high school basketball team in the country. With you in the broadcast tonight is Charles Chuck Mackey and also Charles Fisher who will be basically moving around for tonight. But firstly, we go to Chuck tonight. Two teams, they both come in primarily balanced. Can they match up each other pretty good tonight, Chuck? Yes, Ricardo. This is going to be a very interesting matchup. But I, when you look at the con contrast of both teams, C.I. Gibson is a sort of Arkansas Razorback type team. Um, they believe in 40 minutes of hell, which means they're going to push that basketball at you and play that um, sort of suffocating defense for 40 minutes. Whereas um, the Wildcats tend to play with a little bit more poise, but they can run, and um, their offense is really under control. So we're in for a very exciting night of basketball. Well, Charles, tonight is a night that's going to be kind of fun, primarily because we look at two teams that can work the boards, they can run the floor, and they can also give you some excitement. So tonight, folks are in for a treat. Well, we found the word on the street. This is what most people have been waiting on all season. The Jack Hayward Wildcats, we heard about them in Grand Mama. They capped it off by winning the Grand Mama Championship. The CI Gibson Riders, many thought they could not do it, but Kevin K.J. Johnson brought that team together, and at the right time, they seem to be peaking. The number one and number two ranked team in the country is playing for the New Camp Championship. When was the last time we had that? Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to see a great game here tonight at the Kevin Liza Gymnasium. Two teams, they come in evenly matched. Arkansas, Razorback, Georgetown, Hoyas, you name it, you call it. We're in for a great game. We're going to take our first break in our show tonight. And when we come back, we'll set the lineup for you. Considered one of the best players in the country at point guard, the leader of the Jack Hammer Wildcats, number 13, Marvin Mice Bray. Okay, when are we going to go to starting five? Head coach. Okay, uh, they race. have, all right, you come back on camera show. a little bit more, I'm then we go to the, to the starting Hunter, lineup or Mr. what? Ivan Butler, assistant. Okay. Assisted by okay. Mr. Emily Higgins and Mr. Keith Barr. And now the new Providence Public School champion starting five. Point guard number two, Jermaine Visa Molly. To the Kendall Isaacs gym for the championship game tonight, which will feature the Sackerson Rattlers. And you got it, folks, the Jack Hammond Wildcats. Coach, will the Wildcats come out and run tonight like we anticipate they would, or will they go set tonight? I believe the Wildcats, um, having watched C.I. Gibson throughout the tournament, they're going to really. Um, slow the ball down because pushing the ball and um, playing kind of helter skelter favors the Raptors because like, they like to get that ball and get down the court and transition and so I mean from my coaching um, strategy point of view I'm going to slow that ball down and um, make them play my style of ball. Well I'll tell you what, C.I. Gibson is going to come out also 
They will run, they will set, they will make some things happen on the floor. Kevin K.J. Johnson wants this one very badly. He has been to the second base, but not gotten to the big dance. He's here now, and his team is now ready to play. On the other side of things, Ivan Butler has been dreaming about tonight for so, so long. He wants his Wildcats to come out and be very strong. They are strong. The difference will be whether they follow his directions and play consistent basketball. But either way, we're in for a great game tonight. Who will start? Let's now go to our starting lineup. The Pat Riley of the Bombers, the assistant coach, Mr. Bill Morgan and Mr. Wilton Johnson. Okay. I ask you all now to please stand. Would you all please stand? Would you all please stand for the singing of the national anthem? Please stand. Would you all please rise for the singing of the national anthem, which will be rendered tonight by Ms. Sine Russell of Air Valley. Sine. Sing on what march together to a common loftier goal. Steady sun would, though the weather hide the wide and treacherous show. Lift up your head to the rising sun. Bahamaland till the road you trod lead unto your God. March on, Bahamaland. Thank you. You may be seated. I now invite Mr. Alvord Spetschdok, who is the founding member of the Hugh Campbell Basketball Classic, to please throw up the traditional first ball. I have a ball. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. It's now time to play ball. All right, the teams, you can warm up. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the official uh, start of the Hugh Campbell Basketball Championship round will feature the jockey with Wildcats and the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. You're starting five again to Marcio Dames. They call him Croc. The Ricardo War, big war dog Bethel. Theophilus Big Man Wallace, also Gregory T. Monroe, okay, Marvin Mice Gray, and then we've got for the San Gibson Rattlers, Jermaine Weasel Morley, Alex Pancake Smith, Jeffrey Chazel Henfield, also Christopher C. Brown, and also Tomiko Phillips Smith. Well, Coach Mackey, tonight's game is one that we've talked about from the start of this tournament. Who will be able to survive the rounds and make it happen? 
the two teams that come into the Knights have come in with all the tools. They can run, they can shoot, they can pressure the basketball, they can run the set offense. The question is, can they match up against each other on this floor here at Kendall tonight? Um, you know, Carlo, playing in the AFI day, you can see that it's not a regulation court. It's not 90 yards, four feet long. So if you're looking at advantages, um, C.I. Gibson, some of the players, they've been here before in three years. This will be their second appearance to the championship. So they're used to this floor, and um, it favors them in terms of a running game. However, the Wildcats, um, you can just look at their um, poise as, as they walk on the court, as they move around. And so they're going to be undaunted by all of this excitement. Um, they're champions. They had to have gone through a lot of turmoil and a lot of um, real hard competition during the season to be a representing Grand Bahama. So it's going to come down to who wants it the most and um, who really plays really good, sound, basic basketball. Well, I'll tell you what, we are just about set to go here at the Kendall Isaac Gymnasium as the briefing is now taking place in Center Court. As you can see, the officials going over all matters just to make sure everything is uh, fine. But what we're going to do here is I do believe we're going to take a break. Then when we come back, we'll get ready to start the action. So don't go away, folks. We're about ready to tip off. Hugh Campbell finals here. Kendall Isaac's gym. We'll be right back. The home team tonight will be C.I. Gibson on the score clock. They'll be in their nice white. Welcome back to the Kendall Isaacs Gymnasium for the finals of the Hugh Campbell Basketball Tournament. As the players are getting ready, we do have Charles Fisher standing by with the coaches. Let's shift it over to Fish. Fish. Well, thanks a lot, Rick. Let's make this very quickly of the coaches of both teams. Ivan Butler first of the Sajak here with Wildcat. Ivan, anything changed from last night? No, the game plan is the same. We're just going to come out and play good basketball. We feel if we play good basketball, we stand a chance tonight. 
what was the momentum of your guys prior to the game? Hey, they were pumped. They were psyched. They were just happy to be here, and they didn't intend to leave it all out on the floor tonight. Good luck, Ivan Butler and his Jack Hayward Wildcats tonight. They will take on Kevin K.J. Johnson, C.I. Gibson, Rallis, and Kevin, the same thing I asked Ivan. Anything changed from last night? Yeah, we have to play better defense. Last night, Stevie Bell came out and played an excellent ball game. I got to give Coach Emmerich credit. His boys are ready to play. Uh, we, we need to keep up our intensity. Once we do that, I think we'll be in a good position to win the game. Key to the game is keeping Chris Brown out of foul trouble. Yes. He needs to stop picking up little silly fouls. Once he stops doing that and stay focused and manly tough, I think we'll be in a good position. Well, thanks a lot and good luck. Kevin KJ Johnson, the CI Gibson, Rathless, and the Jack A with Wildcats about to tip it off. Back to you, Rick. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we've got an interesting situation here on the floor at the Kendall Lions Gymnasium. And uh, Coach Mackey, there has to be a home and an away team. One team should be in white, the other should be in colors. We're having a situation here with two teams on the floor, both in colors tonight. What is that going to mean for the officials on the floor and also the fans? And you can see that the black and the gray is relatively close. Well, you know, we've discussed this in um, previous situations like this. And normally the answer is, well, you know, you, you, you're really passing the ball and you're looking at the person you're passing to. But um, these colors are really dark and I feel as if it's going to present some degree of difficulty because, like I said, C.I. Gibson likes to run and so you're not going to have time to really look and really just study the color. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. But um, you I know, I, what, what I found um, doing most of the tournament, um, I've heard coaches, particularly like Norris Bain, for example, he would tell his kids, bring both sets to the gym. And this should have been um, discussed in the coaches' meeting today that we had. That is, who was going to be home and who was going to be visiting. Well, I tell you what, it's going to be fun, folks, in order for this one to actually come your way as uh, both teams will be in colors. As you can uh, see right now, the C.I. Gibson Rattlers are uh, trying now to get themselves all sorted out before they get ready to go to the floor. So that is what has created somewhat of a delay in terms of our start. They've been trying to get the Rattlers to go to their white jerseys as uh, they are going to be the home team. But again, not having the two jerseys in place, that cannot be avoided. So right now, we're going to see this one will work out. As far as we know, the officials are going to have their problems with their both. They're all three of them dressed in gray, so I guess there won't be much problem for those guys calling it as they see it. As you do know, folks, getting here to the championship, interesting for both teams in the semifinal round. What a Sunday we had here as far as the coaches and making some things happen. Jack Hayward defeating the Tabernacle Falcons, 62 to 50. Tomasio and Marvin Gray carrying the team and the San Gibson Rattlers in a squeaker, tied at 65 with some nine seconds on the clock, pulled it out, and that's why they're here today. Here we go. Ball is being jumped and is now controlled by the C.I. Gibson Rattlers, so they will get the ball first. The point guard will make it happen, will be Alex Smith. Alex up top, trying to get on the inside, down low, spin move, inside, good hit, pass the kill, boom, to the ground. Two nothing in favor of C.I. Gibson. Here comes the Jack of the Rockets, the turnover. And here we go. Jeremy Morley will run the offense, kicks it to the near side, baseline move, kicks it back out. Jumper outside, Alex with three. Oh boy! Here we go, they're shooting night, coach. Well, Alex Smith is a kid. Um, last night he made his first five three point attempts. Um, you gotta mark him, you gotta keep an eye on him on the court. And, um, you know, like they've gotten off to a good start, but I'm certain that the Wildcats are gonna settle down. Here we go, Demacio Dance with the basketball. Marvin back over, he's gonna work it. They bring it over to Demacia on the near side. They go back court. Over to the side, Theophilus Wallace. Demacia in the corner, takes a step. And it's going to be off for the Wildcats. Another turnover goes back to the Seattle Gibson Rattlers. 5 0 with 6.39 here in the first period. Championship basketball. Alex will bring it across the timeline. He will run the offense. They go on the near side. Inside move, big move there for the center and Christopher Brown. He is going to be a force to reckon with on the inside and almost got the basketball back. This kid, Chris Brown, is tough on the inside. He makes it happen, coach. 
Well, you know, I'm um, in basketball, there are two franchise positions that you try to establish if you're building a system. And Chris is the big man on the inside for the Wildcats who, who, who help Marvin. And, but it's showing, you know, right now Chris is dominating the game from the inside. And a ball on the floor. Wildcats luckily getting it across the Oculus Wallace. Passing lane goes inside. And got it to go down. Basketball the Oculus. The Wildcats on the scoreboard. 7-2 with 6-0-1 to play here in the first period. Alex now setting it up to go inside. Chris Brown spin. Ball is rebounded by the Wildcats. That swarming defense. Jump ball, says the official. We've seen that trap that they run consistently. And Coach Ivan Butler want to tell Marvin that he needs to settle down. But as far as the Rattlers is concerned, they're going to push the ball. Let's see what the Wildcats will offer here. Tomasio on the near side, kicks it over to Theophilus. Theophilus up top, gives it down low. He's got a lane. Good block! Oh, my! Well, what I've noticed already, Rick, um, if you're watching at home, you notice number 13, Malvin Gray. He's being um, guarded by number 21 from C.I. Gibson. We call that a box and one because Marvin is really the flawed gentleman. As I said, he is the guard. Um, versus Chris, who is the center. And um, they're trying to keep the ball out of Marvin's hand. Well, they're going to have to keep it away from him. And they realize that he is the playmaker. And that's something that our coach Kevin Johnson talked about, that he's going to make sure that he doesn't get beat by the point guard. And we get a foul down low. So the ball will go back to the Jack Hamilton Wildcats. Tomasio Dings will inbound the basketball. He will give it up top to Gregory Monroe. Back to Marvin Gray. Baseline move. Goes around. Takes the jumper. Didn't get it to go down. Ball is loose. The official says it'll go back to the Jack Hayward Wildcats. 5-2 with 5-15 here. They go to Ricardo inside. We're going to get a reach. We said the inside game was going to be important in this one, Coach, and we're seeing the Jack Hayward Wildcats use a lot of it here early in the ballgame. Well, I've noticed them during the um, tournament. They would penetrate, and then they dish off a lot. You know, the strategy right now seems to try and get Chris down and some problems because once he's out of the game, then they can really work their inside game. So it's going to be interesting to see how Chris keeps his composure and get help from his teammates to still the foul trouble. Well, he's going to have to keep his composure to the line. Uh, Ricardo Beto lets it go and it goes down. Make it a 7-3 game in favor of the Rattlers. Up top, Alex gives it over to the other side. Down low, they're looking inside to the big guy. Moving the ball pretty much so in a unique manner. Still looking for the inside. They get it in there to Chris. Chris, baseline move. Gets it back. No, taken away by the Wildcats. They're double teaming Chris on the inside. They realize that they're gonna have to gonna have to give the uh, Wallace some help in there and make sure that Gregory Monroe keeps them isolated. Well, like I said to you earlier, Ricardo, on um, the Wildcats, we're gonna have to sit in that zone and really force the Rattlers to, to play a half court game. Um, yes, they've been going into Chris, but you know he, he, he's turned over a couple of them. And there goes another two points by the Rattlers. Turnover, basket by Alex Smith. Here comes the Wildcats again. And Tomasio Dames loses control. They are getting caught up in a run and gun situation. What needs to happen right now, Coach Butler needs to find a way to um, get Marvin the ball. In that box and one, one of the things you can do is um, set him down into the low box and then have the forward set a pick for him so he can get outside and get the ball. If this ball is kept out of his hands, they're in for a really tough night. It's a 9-3 game. We've got a commercial break coming. We'll be right back to the Sakana Isaacs gym in just a moment. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Zikanda Isaac Gym. Slow motion for you, baby. Taking it right inside. Alex Smith gets the basket, and that's the way it's been. It is a 9-3 scenario here at the gym. And right now, we go back to the action. Ah, Josh Fisher is on the other end of the floor. Fish, are they making the adjustment as you've seen in the first period here of the game? Well, Ricardo, what coach Ivan Butler did during that time, but he really got on the point guard, uh, Marvin Gray. He told Marvin that he's letting C.I. Gibson take it to the game. I believe once Marvin controls this game, Jack Hayward will make a run. Well, we'll see if he can control it right now, but the C.I. Gibson Rappers leading at 9-5. Alex takes the rock inside. That penetration is going to be tough against a team like this uh, Wildcats, but he, they're getting it, and you're seeing the open, the opening in the middle. But, you know, um, Alex Smith found himself in no man's land this night, got into the air. And the only thing he had left to do was throw the ball towards the hoop. And, but that's basketball. You know, sometimes we, clap, we call that kind of short of prayer, and it went in. Well, it's an 11-5 game, 3-21 on the clock. Here come the Wildcats as they set the offense. Theophilus Wallace on top of the key. Double team there by the Rattlers, and we're going to get a push ball. Like you said, they're going to do everything to keep Marvin Gray out of the game, which means if you're going to double team him up top, Somebody's got to be open down low. Now, what, what has to be, what, what see, I guess I have to be careful about too, though, in trying to do that, as you saw just now, one of their guards picked up a foul because he is so entrenched in, in his role to keep the ball out of Marvin's hand that he fought through that pick and picked up a foul. So you, you have to be careful in that kind of a strategy also that you don't lose one of your key players. Well, you don't want to lose them. Let's see if the Wildcats can get back on track. 11-5, 303. Down low, taking the jumper on the outside, putting it down for the Wildcats. Carson Hepburn. Make it now 11 to 8. Here we go. Loose ball down low. And that one's going to go to the Wildcats. So right now, the ball is beginning to fall into their favor. We're going to see how this one pans out. Right now, they've slowed the tempo down. They've taken the Rattlers out of that running gun offense. Well, like I told you, Ricardo, um, I watched the Wildcats, and they have they played a lot of poise. Look at the score. You know, the game is right back in um, control. It's anyone's game at this point. Inside, putting it down and getting the foul. Jordan is Gregory Monroe. You said, Coach, that they were going to open up the floor, make them run, and make them play their set offense. And that's what they're getting. The end result, it's an 11 to 10 game here in the first period. Well, you have two pretty good coaches here tonight. And um, obviously, Coach Butler looked at what was happening there, and he's made some adjustments. They're taking care of the basketball. And um, right now, it's just a free throw away from a tie ball game. Let's see if Monroe can hit it. Let's it fly. That's off, though, no, rebounded by the Rattlers. They go for the double team, and they get the ball back on the turnover, but they lose it again. Taking it, Alex Smith to the hoop. Ball loose, and to clean it up. Putting it down is Randy Ferguson. Here come the Wildcats. Gregory, he's got a land inside. And we're going to get a foul. Chris Brown picks up one. That could be trouble in that regard. But what happened just now is that um, they use the sideline fast break rather than trying to get the ball into Marvin's hand and um, the forward caught himself in a one-on-one -on -one situation and so he took the ball to the basket strong and Chris Brown picked up his second foul and like I told you earlier that's a good strategy and Chris has to play under control and take it in but I know definitely they're going to be watching him and just like that very quickly KJ is going to make that substitution he's going to sit down also checking in the game uh, will be Christopher Darvel, who will come in for Chris Brown. He's going to have to sit down very early. And if he sits down this early in the ball game, but uh, the Wildcats taking advantage of him. First shot by the big kid and making it go down in Gregory Monroe. Now you're going to see a different game. Um, the Wildcats, like I tell you, they like to break down and penetrate. You don't have that shot block in the middle at this time. And so um, his Chris' teammates are going to really have to tighten up on the perimeter and keep that ball from coming inside the paint. Here we go. C.I. Gibson with the basketball. Taking it across. It's going to be Jeremy Moxie. Moxie down low. Taking it straight inside. Nothing there. Rebound. Wildcats. Here they come back again. 
and they lose the ball. Alex Smith gets it off the steal. Alex Smith inside, and he gets the goose. This kid Alex Smith is playing the game of his life tonight. Wildcats, Tomasio, nothing there. Rebound, C.I. Gibson on the run. Jeremy, and he's gonna hold it and set the offense. Looking for a lane, ball is loose, and we're gonna get a foul on the play. That's gonna be recharged to Ricardo Bethel. We're seeing this kid make some things happen. Alex Smith, he makes the offense run. He also sets up the defense when they go to the trap, and he's getting the end result of that, which is what? Turnovers. Well, Alex is really um, a push up the court guard. He makes the defense get back on their heels. And, um, you know, if you, don't, if you don't watch him in the transition, he's going to score easy baskets on you or dish off his teammates. It's a pretty even game right now, and um, as I had expected, both teams are sticking to their style. So Jack made a little run this now, but that's the 40 minutes of hell I spoke about. This guy gets to just turn up the burners. Well, they turn it up, 16 to 12. Shots good, man. And here come the Wildcats trying to get it in. Marvin Gray. He will be the one to bring it across the timeline. Marvin Gray looks for some help. He'll go inside to Tomasio. Tomasio gets hammered on the inside. They were not going to give him that basket. No way in this world. Well, like I said, Ricky has a strategy, like you said. The foul occurred on the inside. You know, um, his Chris is not in there now, and so that's basketball. You, you go, you play to your strengths, and um, the Raptors have to be careful. Tomasio will go to the line, and he gets a chance here to shoot, too. First one. That's good. 16 to 13. 101 here in the quarter. Let's the second one go. It's a two-point game. Here comes C.I. Gibson. They've got an open man down low. And not being able to handle it is a Randy Ferguson. So Ferguson couldn't put a handle on it. So the ball now goes back to the Wildcats of Jack Hayward. Inbound. It'll be Tomasio up top, picked up by Alex. He'll bring it back out. Carson, they go back over to Gregory, who's come out. I guess this is the situation. They're working for one shot. And they throw it away. What I noticed now, Rick, um, with C.I. Gibson on the court, you have Jermaine and Alex Smith. They are the only two real seniors uh, in terms of having been to this dance before. When you look at um, the Wildcats, they, they seem to have basically their starting unit on the floor. So it's interesting to see what's going to happen at this stage. If the um, younger kids from CI Gibson can really step up now and fill those holes. Well, we'll see what happens here. 17 seconds on the clock. And they throw it away. 14.9 with a 16 14 game, Alex. Expecting the cutter to the hoop. In Theophilus Thompson, he was not there. That, well, that one went away, so now you get the Wildcats with 12 seconds and are going to try to work now for that final shot here in the first period. Up top now, Carson Hepburn. Two seconds. He'll take the three-pointer. That's off the mark, and that's the way we'll end the first period. 16-14. Surprises at this venture? Not really. Um, like I told you, I, I, I like the Wildcats' um, style of play. It's similar to the way I coach in terms of they can put some pressure on you but playing that half court game. See I Gibson um created a storm and I am just wondering if coach Johnson is gonna come back with Chris in the second quarter seeing that he has two fouls. But um at this at this juncture the game it's it's evenly contested. I tell you what it's gonna be a great game uh, to see how this one will work out. We are at the quarter mark so what we're gonna do here while Charles Fisher will get a pretty good idea of what the coaches are going to do in the second period, we're going to take another break here, and then when we come back, we get ready for the second quarter and give you some interesting situations and synopsis on the Hugh Campbell Finals. It is Jack Haywood and C.I. Gibson. C.I. Gibson leading at 16-14. We're going to be right back to the Second Gym in just one moment. 
Okay. And welcome back to the Kendall Liza Gymnasium as we get ready to rock and roll. The second quarter of play, it's a 16 to 14 game in favor of the Rattlers of C.I. Gibson. Up top, double team, trying to see if he can get clear. Jermaine, they kick it over on the inside. Alex, looking for something in the middle, nothing there. They kick it back over and a turnover. And here come the Wildcats the other way. The ball is still loose on the floor. And it will be controlled by the playmaker. That's Marvin Gray. Tomasio Dames inside looking for help. He'll kick it back out. Taking a three. Caught it. 17-16. The Wildcats now lead it with 7-18 uh, here in the second. See how Gibson inside. Good move. Good pass. Alex to Randy Ferguson. 18-17. We saw the opening segment here as both coaches want to go and make it happen. Is it what you anticipate to see them turn it around somewhat here in the second period? Well, what you notice now, um, C.I. Gibson also demonstrated this now that they can play the half court game as well as run, you know, play the push-up ball. Um, that was a pass that was into the um, back door because there was no back door help. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, the kid that made the layup, um, number 11, he's a 10th grader, and so these are the guys that are going to have to really step up under these circumstances. I know it's a, it's, it's a big um, task for them playing in this atmosphere, but they're going to have to really keep the, hold the fort now until Chris can get back into the game. Let's go to Charles Fisher. Fisher standing by. Charles, this second period very, very important for both ball clubs. What do the coaches have to say to their players as they came on court? Well, Rick, what I can tell you, Coach Ivan Butler is a very emotional coach. He was mad with Damasio Dams just now for burning a, what do you call a wasted timeout. But taking a look at some of the stats from the first quarter, the, the key figure is Chris Brown with two fouls and only four points. Alex Smith had nine points in that quarter, and they were out rebounded 7-1 without Chris Brown in the game. Okay, on the floor, we get a foul down low. Penetration, taking it hard on the inside, the Rattlers. And again, well, Judge Coach Mackey just did it. Randy Ferguson would be a force to reckon with. Made it happen and taking it on the inside very, very quickly. He will now go to the line and he gets a chance to shoot too. I've also noticed that um, Jeffrey Henfield is now into the game. He's number seven for the Raptors. And he and Randy were two good 10th grade pickups for Coach Johnson. And, um, you know, they can play. And um, they've really been Good, great contributors to the success of this program this year. Well, they get the free throws, make it a 20 to 17 game. 
Marvin Gray up top. Double team gives it to Tomasio. Swarming defense by C.I. Gibson. And we're going to get a walk call on Carson Epburn. Pressure on the basketball, making a difference for the Rattlers of C.I. Gibson. They lead it 20 to 17 with 6.36 here in the second period. It'll be inbound by Jermaine. They go to the far side. C.I. Gibson moving the ball now. Jermaine looks inside. They want to find that cutter. Alex takes the three-pointer. Off the mark. He gets it back. Shoots it. Nothing there. Rebound. It is taken by the Rockets. Here comes Marvin Gray in traffic. Gives it off to Carson. Carson inside. He's going to be fouled on the play. Jitters, you call it, or just bad decisions? Well, I think that was um, a bad defensive play on, on, on behalf of the C.I. Gibson player because number 20 was really caught in no man's land, and um, he got bailed out. So, you know, it's, it's playing smart basketball. The defender could, should have just kept his hands up and not attempt to block the shot. Well, Carson Hepper into the line. Carson missed the course of a two-shot opportunity. He's going to get an opportunity to shoot again. This kind of atmosphere here at the Kendall Isaacs gym is tailor-made for basketball, especially high school basketball. Oh, definitely, Rick. You know, um, early in the tournament, you had the controversy relative to a, a major school not coming, and it was felt that, you know, it would really kill the game. But boy, you know, this shows you that we are hungry for basketball in this town and indeed in the country because this gym is full of capacity and people are still coming in. I tell you what, a turnover of the ball will go back to the Jack Hamlin Wildcats. 20 to 18. Tomasio Dames to Carson. He'll pick it up and shoot it. Nothing there. Ball is loose. Rebound. Gregory Monroe. Oh, the put back and he'll get it to go down. We're tied at 20. 548 in the second period. Jermaine up top. Alex through the corner. They end up giving it to Jeffrey. Inside. Jump ball call. Possession arrow will go to the Jack Hayward Wildcats, and so they will get it. And not to do the pleasure of the fans of C.I. Gibson, they're saying no. But the possession. Seems, yeah, there seems to be some um, dispute about the possession. You know, once the, the jump um, is made at the beginning of the game, then um, it's alternating possession, and so see how Gibson feels if they got robbed in that situation. And I tell you what, I believe that they had a pretty good case, but uh, that didn't sit well as the scoreboard. I showed the possession was to go to the Jack and Wildcats, and just like that, the Rattlers benefit on the foul as Carson Hepburn picking up that one again, and I do believe that's going to be on him and they're going to take Marvin out of the game so Marvin Gray sits down but here come the Rattlers Alex Smith pass it on to Jermaine Jermaine double team kicks it over almost stolen and it'll go back and Tomasio Danes opened up and he came down kind of hard on that one but Alex will inbound it and here come the Sienkiewicz Rattlers they'll set it up they go down low baseline move nothing there ball is loose the Wildcats will retain possession. Dames now. Picked up up high. Gets it across. And I'll tell you what, we have everything happening. And Hepburn takes the jumper, puts it down. 22-20 in favor of the Wildcats now. And here comes Jermaine. In the corner, Alex baseline move. Nothing there. Carson Hepburn the rebound. Look right now, Alex needs to be a little bit more under control. Now, I know he, you know, is really the floor general, but um, he needs to be a little bit under control because realizing that if he throws shots, he really don't have um, Chris, Chris there to help with the offensive rebounding. And we're gonna get a foul call. They're, they're gonna call a jump ball for the officials. Saying no, it's gonna be a push, and so the ball will go back to the Jack Hamlin Wildcats. 22 24 21 second period of play.
And look, Chris Brown has just ended the game um, with four minutes and 20 seconds, you know, with his two fouls. But I know Chris Johnson figures he just can't afford to keep him out of the game at this point. And almost a turnover there with the Wildcats get it back. And they stole it, taking it away, Theophilus Thompson. Thompson, he's going to the hoop. Nothing there, Carson Hepburn the rebound. That swarming defense on the Rattlers. Boy, they tell me that the snake isn't gonna bite, but these guys are biting at the defensive side of things and making it happen. Up top, Wallace on the inside to Marcio. He's got some room inside. The presence of Chris Brown made the difference and he got a foul on the play. And we got another foul. If that is going to be on Chris Brown, that's going to be three. And it is three. He picks up his third foul. Because that was my concern. Um, this, this is a, a very crucial game. With four minutes and 20 when Chris came in. The game was not out of reach. I mean, and, and, and I was just wondering, you know, and that's why I mentioned it when he ended the game. If it wasn't too soon to bring him in. Now he has a third foul. Well, I'll tell you what, interesting enough, third foul. Chris, Chris Brown has got three on him, Fisher. Is that going to be a problem down the line for that C.I. Gibson Rattlers team? Well, Chris, prior to, before Chris Brown went into the game, Coach, Coach Kevin K.J. Johnson went specifically, specifically to Chris Brown, and he told Chris Brown, keep your head in the game, no foul. So a minute into the game, Chris Brown picks up a big foul. I wonder how long uh, Kevin K.J. Johnson can go this remainder of the first half with all the uh, services of Chris Brown, because right now, even with the playmaker of uh, Jack Hayward on the bench. 22, 23, 41. You wanted action, folks. You know this is gonna be a very closely contested game. It will be inbounded to the Jack Hayward Wildcats. They're saying that he's gonna inbound the basketball and the officials now tell him to come get the basketball. They're going to put it on the ground, and he's going to get a five-second count to inbound it, and they get it inside. Theophilus Wallace. And almost lose the basketball. They do lose it. Coming the other way. Inside. Going to get a go down, Jermaine Morley. We're tied at 22. Wildcats basketball. Tomasio Dames takes the jumper. Hits it, it goes down. We're tied at 20, at 24-22. The score now, 3-13. Rattlers coming back. Looking for help up top. Theophilus Thompson. Thompson. Ball loose on the floor. Wildcats get it. Theophilus gets the basket. 26-22, 2.54 in the second. Right now, uh, Ricard, I noticed that um, the point guard is off. The, Alex is off the court to C.I. Gibson. Oh boy, that was a dumb foul. Um, he's going to go to the basket now and shoot three free throws because he got fouled on a three point attempt. And I'll tell you what, Gregory Monroe is going to get it. He's going to get an air from Coach uh, Ivan Butler. And he's gonna pull him aside and let him know that he is not happy with that at all. But to the line will go Jermaine Morley. Morley is gonna get a chance to shoot. No good. 26-22, folks. 2.41 here in the second period. Second shot. And he puts it away. What actually happened there? They have three three-point lines in here, and that shot was actually taken outside of and the, the NBA. NBA so that's why the coach <laughs> is really mad because most kids ain't not gonna make that. Well, let's see what he gets. The third one. Two out of three ain't bad. 24, 26, 239. And another turnover. It goes back to the Rattlers. Inbound now, back into the game, Alex Smith, also Jermaine. They go to Alex up top, three-pointer, no good. Ball loose on the floor. Marvin Gray back into the game also. Marvin in traffic, stops and shoots. All to the shot, down low. Ricardo Bethel, the rebound. He loses the basketball. Gets it back, Wildcats inside. Good the jam! Oh, my! 
28-24. That will woke up the crowd. Double team up top. A walk by C.I. Gibson's Jermaine Morley, and it goes back to the Jack Haywood Wildcats to lead at 28-24. This is a game of nerves. Um, you know, you, you, you have Jermaine, Alex. People don't normally make mistakes. Um, it's a game of nerves. This is a big tournament. And, you know, we have kids here. There goes a steal by Jermaine. Jermaine puts it up. Good yeah. basket. 28-24. The offense wall is inside to Gregory Monroe to Ricardo Bethel. Good ball movement, and they get the basket. 30-26, 141 here in the second period. Jermaine. Handling the ball up top. Baseline, ball loose. Wildcats get it. The outlet pass. The offense is Wallace. He's going to stop and shoot it. He puts it down. And very quickly, Kevin K.J. Johnson wants a timeout on the floor. So, Coach, let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to the Sekendal Isaacs Gym inside Gregory Monroe with the jam. Oh boy, that got everybody up on their feet. That's what basketball is about. And here we go, folks. Back to live action here at the Kendall Isaacs Gymnasium. 26-32. Jack here at leads this one. Uh, 119. Ricardo Lifo and Chuck Mackey. Here we go. 32-26, 115. And C.I. Gibson double team up top. Working the ball, trying to get it on the other side. It's Tomiko Smith inside. Big basket. C.I. Gibson making a run. Here comes Jack here with Tomasio Dames. That's no good. Ball is loose on the floor. They kick it out. Monroe gets it, and last touch, it'll go. Back to the Wildcats. Tomasio was a little bit out of control on that shot. And he's complaining to the official who doesn't want to hear it. So he needs to play basketball. Monroe, and a stolen ball. Good hands by Jermaine Morley. C.I. Gibson now, what a chance to cut the lead. Inside, nobody there, and we have got to walk. Oh, my. Christopher Darbo, was that? He got excited. 
That was an excellent call. Like I said, um, they, they have some rookie players in number five. He's a new player this year and replacing Chris. And rather than go up and, and play for the foul, he tried to avoid a block. But once you get up on, you have to let the ball go. And he just came back down with it. So it was a good call by the official. Wildcats now, 30.7 seconds on the clock up top. Tomasio Dames picked up very quickly. He's going to be guarded by Tico Smith, D'Amico. We're going to get a foul call. Let's see who the call foul is on. And Tomasio Dames is getting upset. They're going to double team him. They're going to make him make mistakes. They're not going to allow him to dominate like he did in the semifinal round with uh, the Falcons of Chapanaco. So he's going to have to keep cool. If he doesn't, he'll find himself in trouble very quickly. Yes, he really, you know, um, the officials are calling a little closer tonight. It's championship. You know, um, people would probably say let the kids play, but now that you're here, you, you got to play good fundamental basketball. Got to play. Tomasio, off balance shot. Ball is loose. He gets the rebound. Inside. Nothing there. Gregory Monroe to clean it up. Puts it back in. 34-28 to score. Three seconds on the clock. Jermaine shoots. No good. And we're going to get a foul on the play, and he's going to get a chance to shoot three. Uh, yep. 34-28. And to the line will go Jermaine Morley. Jermaine Morley now with .6 seconds on the clock left gets a chance to shoot three. Misses the first. We've talked about free throws throughout this tournament. They have been detrimental to these to these players. And you know, earlier I wanted to mention um, that I, I kind of felt deep in my gut that this game was gonna come down to um, free throw shooting. And one thing you find with this gym versus the AF Adley gym is that the rims here are live. AF gives you a lot of um, dead, dead shots. And so the kids gonna have to really adjust with the free throw shooting, but that's a very important part. Well, I tell you what, we've reached the midway point of our broadcast. 34-29, the Jack Hayward Wildcats needs the C.I. Gibson Rattlers for an interesting scenario. Tough ball game thus far for both teams as they now try to focus on what they need to do as far as the second half. Fisher, tell me about your viewpoint as far as what you've seen here in the first half of play. Well, Carlo, I can say it's still a pretty close ball game here. 34-29 at the half. The C.I. Gibson Rattlers really missing their big man, Chris Brown, especially down in the middle. Let's see what is going to be a factor if Chris Brown is able to play. The remainder of this game is just those three balls or pick up one. Right now, it seems to be that the Marshall Diems seem to be carrying the load for the uh, Sajak Haywood Wildcats and not the playmaker, Marvin Gray. Hopefully, after the first half, we'll get a word with Coach Ivan Butler on adjustments him and Kevin J.J. Johnson will have to make in the second half. Okay, Fish. Well, thank you very much. We have reached the midway point. 34-29 is our score. We send it back to the studio to Chris Saunders for our halftime show. We'll be back in just a moment. More basketball right after this. What are we going to do for the break? Anything in half time to come back here or what? Mario, you read me?
And welcome back to the Ken and Liza's Gym. Again, we are at the halftime juncture in this one. Uh, Charles Fisher has some stats out of pass on to us. He's trying to get them over there. Fisher, you got those stats for us? Well, no. No, he's not standing by. We are still at the halfway point, 34-29. Still trying to get them. We will be able to give you those stats when we do start the third period. But it has been uh, the game that we all anticipated. A game built on speed, the inside game, and Chris Brown in foul trouble. That's going to be the story for much of what's going to happen in the third period. So basically, both teams have to come out and play. It's a lot of basketball to go. So folks, if you're not here by now to get in some of this, you're going to be missing a dandy. Chris, back to you. Thank you very much, Chris, and welcome back to the Kendall Lions and Gymnasium. I'll tell you what, we're still in the halftime festivities. The Jack Haywood Wildcats getting their award as far as the cheerleading competition. They are relatively celebrating. But our Charles Fisher is standing by with Kevin K.J. Johnson. He's down 34 to 29 at this juncture. Fisher, what's going through K.J.'s mind here at the midway point? Well, thanks a lot, Ricardo. Kevin K.J. Johnson still a pretty close game, 34-29, but not where you want to be. No, um, we're not taking care of the ball like we, we, we should. I think we're hustling out there. We're playing good, pretty good defense, but we need to take care of the ball much better. Early in the game, I saw you went to Chris Brown and say, Chris Brown, no mental mistake. He went right into the game. A minute into the game, he picked up the foul. Yeah, um, mental mistake. In, in a type of a game like this, you got to be mentally tough. And uh, unfortunately, he got out of sync, but I think he's going to be playing better in the second half. What are some of the major adjustments you have to make? Because Jermaine Morley and Alex Smith seems to be carrying the load right now. How long can they do that? Well, uh, my bench got to step up. In order for us to win this game today, my bench got to step up. We need to take care of the ball, stop turning the ball over, and continue playing solid defense. Once we do that, 
I think we should be successful. All right, good luck, Kevin. KJ Johnson in the second half. 34-29 to score. Back to you, Rick. Thank you very much, Fisher. Coach Mackey, we look at the second half of play now. We find that uh, with uh, the Jacobson Rattlers, they've got some foul situations. they got the big guy in foul trouble. What has to happen now? KJ says his bench has got to step up. If his bench doesn't step up, he can find himself in trouble. So he needs now for his team to settle down and make some things happen on the offensive end. Well, like I said earlier, Ricardo, um, it, 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 it would have come down to making adjustments. Um, I mentioned that C.I. Gibson likes to push the ball, but at some point they're going to have to make that adjustment and slow the ball down because of the style they play versus um, Sir Jack, who was kind of a half-court team. Um, they've been making the mistakes. They've been rushing and uh, as a result of that, making silly fouls. It's going to be interesting to see if Chris would start the third quarter. Three fouls with two quarters to go. You're, you're, you're in a kind of precarious position. Um, but there's no tomorrow. So Coach Johnson is going to have to make a big decision. I'm just waiting to see if he's going to come out with him. Well, we'll see how that goes. Also, John Fisher is uh, trying to get uh, Coach Ivan Butler, who's standing by. Let's see if we can get uh, Fisher to get a comment from Coach Butler. Fisher, you've got it. All right, Coach Ivan Butler, are you happy with the 34-29 lead at the break? Well, the press gave us some problems in the first half, but we are happy with the way we're the score is right now. If we continue to play with the way we've been playing, we feel we'll be all right. Earlier in the game, we got on Marvin Gray. You told Marvin Gray to get the ball. Do you want him to get the ball in the second half? Yeah, I think he's playing. He's just a little bit too hype right now. Once he calms down, he'll be a much player. I think he's playing into their hands, fighting them. He needs to step back and play his game. Kevin K.J. Johnson said he's going to make some adjustments. Are you going to make some adjustments as well? Oh, most definitely. When the minute he adjusts, we adjust. It's going to be a chess match from here on in. All right, thanks a lot, Coach Ivan Butler and the Sajak Haven Wildcats. Up right now, 34-29 at the break. We're going to have more basketball right back to you, Greg. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, a chess match, Coach Mackey. <laughs> You get 60 minutes of basketball, it's going to come down to a chess match. You know, quite, um, Coach Butler's done a good job in this program in five years. Um, I remember about two years ago, we played them, and then Aaron Bailey stepped onto the court because we are rebuilding. Um, and Brad Muhammad, the Christmas song, and they figured, oh yeah, easy win for the Wildcats, and we shot them. Uh -huh. I think from then, they probably have figured, hey, we really have to get ready. And here they are today, hats off. Well, they are ready to go, and we are ready to go with our third Period of play here from the Kendall Isaac Gymnasium. The possession arrow points in favor to the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. Here we go, folks. 34-29. They go back inside, kicks it out to the top. Alex to the Jermaine. Alex has a good look. The three-pointer off the mark. Inside Jermaine, that's blocked, rebound. Jermaine, baseline, throws it up. Inside, Gregory Monroe with the basketball, gives it up to Marvin Gray. Marvin takes it across. He will set the pace here. Looks for some help, gives it over to Tomasio. Tomasio takes the jumper. That's off the mark, ball is loose. And it goes back to the Wildcats. Normally the first minute or two of the ball game, uh, it takes them to get a little bit hyper in terms of what's going to happen. We'll see what happens in this juncture. Inbound. Wildcats now. They go back to Damasio. He's got a baseline, and he drives in, and they did give him the back door. Well, Chris had to back off, I mean, but you got to go and play. Um, let the chips lie where they, where they may. Um. We'll see outside. Oh, my, what a big three-pointer by Tomiko Smith. Smith outside, drains it, 36, 32, 702. Boy, that's a big basket. That's something that KJ and the Rattlers needed in order to curb that. Oddly enough, also limping, nursing that bad knee is uh, Alex Smith. Got to watch him for the remainder of this one. Alex picked up very quickly. Theophilus back door, Ricardo Beckel. Classic basketball, 101. 38-32, 6.50 here in the third period. Alex gives it up, up top. Jermaine steps, moves, has some room. Down low, nothing there, Christopher. Can't do much with it. So the ball will end up going back to the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. Chris Brown will now inbound the basketball underneath the hoop. Chris.
Davis looks for help. They push it over to the far side. They give it to Tomiko. Tomiko up top. Ball is stolen away. Tomasio Davis to the hoop. Gets the basket. 30, 40 to 32. 628 here in the third. Here come the Rattlers. Jermaine inside. Chris Brown double team. Looks out. Gives it up. Ball is blocked by Marvin Gray. Inside play. We talked about the defense on the inside and how they will push it. And right now they're looking for Chris to step up inside there. Back door. Good move. Alex, good eyes. Looks and sees Randy Ferguson. And gets the deuce. They go to the man to man. Let's see if they get it across. Marvin Gray out of control, but he gets it across the awful as Wallace. Wallace to Ricardo Bethel. He goes back door. Chess game, coach. Um, the back door plays too wide open. Um, both teams need to shut that down. One 40. of the ways to do that is play the level of the ball um, away from you. 42-34, another back door move inside, but nothing there. Ball is loose. Tomasio Dames has it. Gives it to Ricardo Bethel. He starts move off the glass, put it away. 42, 34, 5, 37, Jack Hayward. Alex threw it away. Oh, the word was out of my mouth. I was going to say, keep your composure. Alex throws the ball away. Kevin KJ Johnson may have to go to his bag of tricks very quickly here. It's a 10 point game 5 15, 44, 34. Taking the jumper outside, Marvin Gray. Kevin needs to call a timeout. And, and Kevin wants a timeout on the floor. He does. That's a run. You got to take that timeout and stop it. Otherwise, when you look up, you're out of this game. I tell you, we've got a timeout on the floor. Let's take a break. We're going to be back to the Sakana Isaacs in just one moment. Jim, here we go, folks. Action on the floor, 48 to 37. Watch you away. Big basket on the outside by Tamiko Smith to get the Rattlers back into it. That one's going to be a foul call, and that's going to be a three on the big cat. And he goes out, and coming back is going to be Carson. That's going to Masio Dames, that is. Two on him. Here we go. They come back in. On the near side, in traffic, we're going to get a foul call, and that's going to be call on Carson Gray. So Carson picks up another foul. Carson Hepburn, that is, my apology. So he picks it up, and that's going to be four on him. And he's going to have to go out in just a minute. He's been that force on the inside, but the bottom line is that to the charity strike to shoot two is going to be the awful is Thompson. Now you've seen the turn, they say the swing of the pendulum, the other direction. Well, the Wildcats have made a run. You're going to have to corner with that. you got to keep your poise. Poise is a very important aspect of basketball. And here goes a missed free throw, too. Remember I said earlier, it can come down to free throws. Sometimes well, we you need them, Ricardo, so you get back into the ball game. Well, we're going to see how they get back in here, but here come the Wildcats now. And the turnover, but they get it back. Ball is still loose on the floor, and they're diving for it. 
inside, ball is still loose. Marvin Gray inside to the hoop. Nothing there, Gregory. He is hacked inside. Uh, Tomasio caught it. And they're saying no. The officials are saying no. So it goes now to C.I. Gibson. That's the break KJ needed. He can convert on this end here and get his team back into scoring mode. Let's see how we go. The Rattlers ball. Alex, near side jumper. Nothing there. We're going to get a push. And that's going to be charged to Tomasio Dames. And Tomasio picks up that one. And the ball now will be inbound to the side. It goes to the Rattlers. It'll be inbounded by Randy Ferguson. Almost stolen away, ball is still loose. Chris Brown will control it. They go back inside of Chris Brown, he's double teamed. Spin move, baseline move, nothing there. This kid has got a good baseline move to the basket. The thing is, there was no help on the other side when he came across. So what the thing is, the mask will always try to um, send the, the offensive player to your help side. Um, the defender's playing him right down the middle. Anytime you get the ball into the low post like that, he should really take away the baseline. As you saw, um, Chris got a drop step around him and picked up a, a foul. And right now, making some substitutions, Demacio Dames will check out of the ball game. Checking in will be Junior Balfour for the Wildcats, but Chris to the line, and Chris gets it to go down. For a big man, he's got a good touch with the basketball. Let's it fly. Didn't get the roll. Ball is still loose, and the Wildcats will recover. Marvin Gray will bring it across. He will be picked up very quickly by Theophilus Thompson. They get him trapped in the corner. Ball is loose, and he almost threw it away, and we're going to get a walk. So the Rattlers now will get it. Jermaine will give it to Alex. Alex looks for help to Theophilus. They're going to move it. They go inside to the big guy. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. That's going to be on Gregory Monroe. And if that's on Monroe, that's going to be four on him. And the officials doing a very good job. They're keeping this one close. 48-38, folks. 3-18. And they have now got a shooting situation. So what they will do is they will go to the line. And here's where you can win the game. We're talking about free throws. Christopher Brown goes to the line again. He gets a chance now to shoot. It's the first. Make it a nine point ball game. Gets opportunity here to cut it to eight. Charity line, he looks at it, lets it go, and he gets it to go down. Big basket. Tomasio Dames now back in the game, playing with three fouls. He'll give it up to the Opolis Wallace. Stolen ball by Alex Smith. Alex to the hoop. Nothing there. Rebound by the point guard and Marvin Gray. Marvin across the line. Marvin to the hoop. Inside move and it goes down. Holy cow. But well, here comes the Rattlers the next way. Inside. Nothing there. Ball is out of bounds and it'll go to the Rattlers. That was an interesting one. The ball hit the official, but the official is out of bounds. And so it's the right call. The ball goes back to the Rattlers. 50 to 42, 46 in the third. Inbound Rattlers basketball. Theophilus. Up top, almost stolen away, ball is still loose. Marvin Gray, he's got a lane to the hoop. Put it down. 52-42-34. Marvin have very good hands. That's two steals back to back he's gotten. Um, very good player. Inside, another turnover. They were going to Chris Brown. And Marvin on the floor. We're gonna get a foul play. That's gonna be on Jermaine and Jermaine. Picked up the foul right there. 
playing a little bit too tight. You can tell these kids want it. They know this is it. Here is the play again the other way, the full court pass. Inside, Jermaine taking it to the hoop. And right there to take it away, the good defense. Back to the action on the play. Wildcats now, Tomasio Dames. Up top. A baseline move here, inside, didn't get it. Got the rebound back, fighting inside. Put it back, put it back, the tip. And got it to go in. That's three touches and nobody touched him. Dames was tenacious that's now on the boards. I mean, he got his, he took three shot attempts and got the rebound all three times and eventually scored. They, they, they're really playing like, like they wanted now. Um, Shaq Gibson needs to get their points together. They need to get back into this game. Let's see what they do here up top with the basketball, trying to get it inside. The offense talks to Wallace Lewis, Bobcats turn it over. Ricardo Bethel to Tomasio, and he is hit. Right. And the Rattlers are saying, not in this house, baby. No more easy way. Nothing happening. Tomasio's looking for the intentional, but nothing there. He went at the ball. So Ricardo, you know it's a game um, played by kids. Emotions are going to flare, but um, got to try and keep it clear. We didn't really don't want the injuries. That was a hard foul, but it's a part of basketball. It sure is. So going to the line will be Tomasio James. He will shoot two. Kevin KJ Johnson trying to figure out some things here. Missed the first one. Our Charles Fisher over there on the side. Fish is getting kind of physical down there. Gonna be rough with the main of this one. Well, we go back to the action on the floor now as we get a 54 40, 139 to go. Jack Hayward. Checking back out of the game and checking back in will be the big guy in Gregory Monroe. Now we get the foul and we'll get a shooting opportunity here. So going to the line for the Rattlers is going to be Randy Ferguson. Ferguson lets it fly and he misses the first one. Free throws, they're called free throws. That's why you go to the charity strike. Yep. You know, um, I have a problem with my kids um, when I go into the gym to, for practice. I meet them practicing their dunks. And free throw shooting is very important, you know. Each one of those you're is behind the point. in a game like this. Inside, we get a walk-off, walking violation. I want you to take a look at Alex Smith. He is favoring that left leg. He's got a bandage on it. He's not able to move as he was earlier in the ball game. That's going to be another story we're going to have to stay on top of. Up top, they go inside to Chris. Chris to the hoop. No, nothing there. We're going to get a foul call. It's going to be called on Marvin underneath. That was a power move and a good move for Chris Brown to get open. Should have made the basket, but, that, but didn't get a second look. And he will have to go down to the charity tournament. Gets the chance now to make two because he's a pretty good free throw shooter. Yes, but um, you know, the, the play before, it just doesn't matter of Chris needing some more work. Um, when you catch the ball like that, you need to, as a big man, get control of the ball, collect yourself to go strong. He tried to catch and shoot at the same time. And he just didn't know where to bounce it. He will go to the line, lets the first one fly. That's off the face of the rim. He's not happy at all with that one. Let's see if he can cash in here. 54 40 is our score. Substitutions being made. Jermaine sits down. Checking into the game will be Kermado Lightborn. And it goes down for the big guy, Chris Brown. 54-41. We've got 112 here in the third period. Inside, Gregory Monroe. Good handoff. Back door. That back door is working for Jack Hayward. Alex, he's got a look inside. And that's going to be a foul call, and Ricardo Bethel will pick that one up. 
the liquid um what's crossing the back door layups easy layups is that ci is behind they they pressing and then you're pressing like that you know your, your defense is spread out and one pass could eliminate two to three players depending on what type of press you're using and so you end up with a three on two that's now and um easy basket making the free throw randy ferguson hits the first of a two-shot opportunity hits the second 56 43 55 seconds here in the third period. Tomasio Dames across the line. Theophilus Wallace up top, looking inside the Gregory Monroe. They go down low, jumper off the mark. Here come the Rattlers. And we're gonna get a foul on the play and that's gonna be charged to Theophilus Wallace. A little bit too aggressive. And going to the line to shoot will be Camario Whiteborn, who is into the game, his first time seeing some action tonight. 41.2 seconds on the clock, 56 43. Free throws, very, very important at this juncture. Let's see if he can cut it to that score. Off the front of the rim. The call I wanted to throw on the uh, play before, you know, I, I'm a fan of Rick Patino, Coach Patino, and he says, our fouling the gate hustle also stops the clock that's what happened just now um you know maybe the guy would have scored two baskets but more importantly the clock continues to run well that's a part of it the clock runs it makes it easier for him with the clock not running you allow your opponent to get back in it and right now they call a lane violation so getting an additional shot will be camaro lightborn And the officials also having some problems in deciding on what's going on in that regard. Well, we've seen some situations again, before. KJ Johnson has to get himself together and like make some things happen as far as his team is Coca -Cola, concerned. Coca -Cola, nice but on the other side of it, of Coach Butler now, looking at the advantage he has at 56 43, is going to have to get his team to understand that this clock has now got to be your main target and also you got to keep scoring because if you don't the rattlers will be right back on you in a, in a quick snap of an eye well you know slowing up the ball wouldn't hurt for jack haven because like i said they are a good half court basketball team um in this situation i, I go back to one of my co coaching mentors dean smith um he would have probably gone four quarters right now run some time off that clock and get the last shot to end the third quarter well i'll tell you what we'll see what they do Going back to the line now will be Ken Mario Lightborn. He will get a chance now to shoot a shot primarily because of a lane violation. And he missed that one as well. Rebound by the Wildcats, Marvin Gray. So Gray gives it to Tomasio. Looking inside, 33 seconds. And he loses the basketball. Inside, the offense wall is behind, gets the ball back. So they give it away, they get it back to Masio, trying to do too much with the basketball. They give it to Marvin now, he's up top. Brings it across, 15 seconds. Ricardo Bethel up top, looking for help. Give it back to Marvin. Inside, to Masio in traffic. Gregory Monroe, back door, and he's gonna be hacked. They were not gonna give him that one, coach. <laughs> what a shortest now. I think Gregory popped into the lane, he was about to get out. Tomasio gave him the ball, and so he wasn't um, quite under control of his feet. But um, nonetheless, it enables him to go to the free throw strike. 56-43. Monroe to the line. Gregory lets the first one fly, and he puts it down. 57-43. Gregory Monroe, one of the big kids that come from the Jack Haywood Wildcats. They call him T. And it's not T-Bone because he's a small character. Rebound inside, nothing there. Two seconds on the clock. C.I. Gibson cannot do much with it. So we have completed three quarters of play. 57-43, Jack Hayward leads C.I. Gibson. We've got a commercial break coming. We'll be right back right after this, folks.
Providence. At July 29, the Bahamas Basketball Federation will be hosting the Caricom for Junior Boys and Girls. July 29th, for the fifth, right here at the Air Factory and the Candlelight Gym. Some 14 countries will be here with over 53 teams. That's for senior boys and girls. Some 14 countries, Jamaica Barbados, Trinidad, Texas and Caicos, will be here July 29th to August 5th for senior boys and girls, the Caricom Basketball Championship. And welcome back to the Canada Lions Six Gymnasium as you get ready for the final eight minutes of play as the Jack Haywood Wildcats hold a 57-43 lead over the CI Gibson Rattlers. Our Charles Fisher standing by. Fish, this is going to be a very interesting fourth quarter for both ball clubs. With the Jack Haywood Wildcats up by 14, Coach Ivan Butler told them to work the offense, try to run some time off the clock and get the best shot possible. As for Kevin K.J. Johnson, he wants to pound the ball inside to Chris Brown and try to get some three-point plays to get them back in the game here in the fourth quarter. Well, here we go. Do the action on the floor. Jack Hayward with the basketball. Marvin Gray almost loses it. Gets clear to Tomasio. This swarm of defense of the second to Rattlers, telegraphing it. They go to Gregory Monroe, back door. Ball is still there with the Wildcats. Inside, strip, kicks it out. Gregory, they go inside to Ricardo Bethel, and he walked on the line. They're trying to take it inside, but evidently not being able to hold on to the basketball, coach. Well, they had some opportunities down inside. They would defense well and um, try to get it back inside and just turn that one over. Well, we'll see if they can get back. Here come the Rattlers now. Alex, notably limping to the far side, looking to make something happen, and Anthony Gates, Chris Brown, double team. We're gonna get a foul, too. And that's gonna be called on number nine, and that's gonna be called on the big guy down low, and Ricardo Wardog Bethel. So he picked up a foul, that's two on him. To the line will go Chris Brown. 57-43. Chris misses the first one. You mentioned that these rims are live, and so you've got to put the ball in the hole and take nothing for granted. Second shot. That one got the favorable bounce and goes in. Tomasio Danes now gives it up to Wallace. And getting across the line is Robin Gray to the hoop. The tip to go back. Fire Theophilus Wallace, 59-44. Here come the Rattlers. Ball is loose on the floor. Tomasio Dames in traffic. Ball still loose on the floor. And it'll go to the Jack Hayward Wildcats. Well, um, here again, I notice Jermaine isn't on the court. Um, Alex is coming off, and so you're playing with the veteran Chris and number 10 who happens to be the Theophilus Thompson. They're the only guys that really bring seniority to this team, and so it's gonna be interesting. Missed shot there by the Wildcats, rebound by Randy Ferguson. Brought across the charity, the timeline by Theophilus Thompson, inside Chris Brown. Picked up by the big center, inside, good spin move, and gets the basket, 59-46. 6-17 here in the fourth quarter. 
Marvin Gray gets it across the line. They'll give it to Tomasio. Looking for help. They'll bring it up top to Theophilus Wallace. Wallace picked up his dribble. Ball loose on the floor. And the C.I. Gibson Rattlers get it back. Here they come. Theophilus Thompson. He'll take it back out. They're looking for the big kid. Baseline move. Nothing there. Rebound. To put it back in. Randy Ferguson. 59-48. C.I. Gibson making a run. 5-43. And they're stepping up the defense. Coach Mackey, they're making them earn every shot and forcing the turnover. Well, I expect C.I. Gibson to make a run. Um, like I said, they, they play 40 minutes of hell. They kind of got a little flat tire early in the game, but they seem to be pumped up now and um, ready to go. Jack Hayward inbound. They go to Ricardo Bethel inside. Gregory can't hold it. They turn it over again. Here come the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. Jermaine kicks it out. Theophilus for three. No good. Inside the big guy, the basket and the foul. Christopher Brown answered the call and delivered. The fans are excited. It is a nine point ball game. We knew we were in for a dog fight. That's what we've got. Yeah, that's uh, about a six point run, six zero run by the Rattlers. Good timeout by Coach Butler, but um, you know, the Rattlers are home and the crowd is behind them, and so um, they seem to have been, become a little bit motivated at this juncture of the game. Let's see if they can keep it up. Oddly enough, want to make a note also that back into the game was Jermaine Morley. And also Alex is on the bench. Again, he's having some problems in terms of handling that left knee. Hopefully he can uh, get that sorted out. They're gonna need him in the final seconds of this one. But the story has been Chris Brown on the inside. He has been the force to reckon with. Make it a three point play. And inside to get the rebound and get it back. Randy Ferguson, 59-52, 5 -oh. six on the clock. The Rattlers are back, Jack, and they are on the hunt. Wildcats basketball, Ricardo Bethel inside, spin moves. Inside, Theophilus, nothing there, ball is loose. Rebound, Chris Brown. Here come the Rattlers. Theophilus Thompson. And Marvin Gray can't control the basketball, and it'll go back to C.I. Gibson. Um, Ricardo on the previous play, the freeboard coaches have been talking about the rules. Um, they're used to the ball having to hit the rim before the uh, player can move. And if you notice on two free throws, Cy Gibson has gone into the lane because we play in a different rule that you can move once the shot is released. Inside, Chris Brown in traffic. And a foul is going to be called on the big dog. Ricardo Bethel and this kid of the charity strike Chris Brown will not leave the floor he knows that this championship is his in just a minute also standing by is our Charles Fisher we're going to go to Charles in just a sec inside move and they throw it away Fish what's the latest well, it's an update on Alex Smith. He, earlier in the second quarter, he got kicked right above the left knee. And right now, it is starting to swell, according to the medical staff. They say Alex Smith is really in some pain, but he's going to try and go rest it for now and come back about three to two minutes left in the ball game. Making the basket, Tomasio Dave, 61-52, 4-17. Tomasio is, is really a good big guard. Um, plays with a lot of poise. And, um, you know, he just took it down calmly just now, pull up and shoot a jumbo with a small opponent. There we go. The Rattlers will get it back. Trying to make it happen. Up top, Jermaine kicks it out. And we're going to get a kick ball, and it'll go to the side. The officials allowing him to play, but trying to keep it close, keep it clean. 
But these kids have got good basketball skills and talent. They try to go to Chris Brown. He's triple team. Down low, they swing it. Up top, Theophilus Thompson. He's finding some trouble finding the basketball. Inside, Chris Brown, inside, back door. Sixty-one fifty-four. Wildcats get it across the line. Marvin Gray now will run the offense. Three thirty-six on the clock. Marvin shoots. Ball is loose. Big guy, Chris Brown, the rebound. Here comes C.I. Gibson. Sixty-one fifty-four. Inside, taking the jumper. Nothing there. Ball is loose, and we're gonna get a clearing. Here we go. Wildcats with the ball. We're going to get a block call, and that block is going to be on Theophilus Thompson. Boy, talk about excitement. The fans in here have all gotten out of their seats and gotten to their feet. They realize that with 3.09 in this ball game, anything is possible. 61-54. We have a timeout on the floor. Let's take another break, and when we come back, we'll give you the final three minutes. Don't go away, folks. Hugh Campbell rolls on in just a moment. Welcome back to the Kendall Isaac Gymnasium, Ricardo Lightwater and Charles Chuck Mackey. 309, 6154. Set the tone for me. What happens now? Well, it's um, nine seconds under three minutes to go, and the pressure. Who can withstand the pressure? Now, this game has a lot of pressure in it, and um, defense is going to be vital, but also taking care of the basketball by both teams. Let's see who takes care of it. Inside to Marcio Dez. Can go. Here come the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. Jermaine down low. Alex in the game to the hoop. Nothing there. Foot back. Rebound. Gregory Monroe. Tomasio Dez with the rebound. He will give it up to the playmaker and Marvin Gray. Marvin Gray across the timeline. Alex into the game. Nursing that bad knee. Has a lane inside. We're going to get a foul on the play. Let's see who it goes to. I do believe it's going to be charged to, to Miko Smith. Well, that's a very um, pivotal matchup. I don't, I, I don't think Alex, with his leg the way it is right now, um, can keep up with Marvin. And as you saw, um, he's been substituted out of the game. He just can't go. I think he wants to give it his all. You know, um, I think he's a senior. He'd really like to go out with a win, but. The legs just not there. Well, let's see how he handles this one. Goes at the line and hits the... 
shot. Second one, puts it away. 63-54, here we go. Well, see, I gets it, oh boy. Taking it inside, nothing there for Tomiko. Tomiko gets it back. Nothing there, Frederick Monroe, rebound. They go to Marvin. Marvin body on him, he gets it across them. And let's see what the call is. We're gonna get a foul call, blocking foul. And that's gonna go on Theophilus Thompson. That's gonna be three on him, so. Coach, I'm looking at the, at the clock right now. It's, it's, it's becoming a critical factor. Two minutes, 13 seconds. I tell you. If C.I. Gibson is gonna get back in this game, they have to make a surge right now, a defensive surge. And right now, four fouls on the floor. It'll be inbound by the Jack Hayward Wildcats. Tomasio Davis to inbound it. Out to the off. Oh, what a move to Gregory Monroe. That was a very good set inbounds. I haven't seen one of them for a long time. I tell you. Guys are really playing some good basketball. 65, 54, 201, baseline move. Inside, Chris Brown. Inside, didn't get it to go down. The big guy fighting for everything on the inside has played one ball game that is unbelievable. 65-54, 1.57 on the clock. C.I. Gibson trying to get back in this one. To the line. This is the first of the two shot opportunity. Free throws, coach. Um, I've seen them miss about in this second half about six. Put it in and down by five points. Second one puts it away. 65 55. 153 on the clock. Tomasio Davis to Carson back up top. Jack Hayward. Marvin Gray to the hoop and he got the roll. Marvin is just awesome. Very much under control. And they go for the trap, nothing there. Chris Brown gets it back. Theophilus takes the three-pointer, NBA style. Ball is loose. Chris Brown inside, basket and the foul. I didn't know what happened there. Everybody stood still. I won. They thought they heard something. They just simply stood, stood and still and nothing happened. A minute and 28 is a lot of time. I think what happened then was that um, they didn't want to go and foul and nobody went to defend the basket and that foul will be on the big guy from Jack Hayward and that will be Gregory Monroe and the fans here at the gym beginning to file out can't understand still a lot of time on the clock three point play it's a nine point ball game 67 58 with 125 to play. Anything is possible in the last two minutes. Marvin Gray across the timeline. In traffic, down low. Ricardo Bethel didn't go down. Christopher Brown, a rebound. Here comes the Seattle Gibson Rattlers. And ball almost taken away. Chris gets it back. Up top. He's got a lane, goes inside. Nothing there. Gets his own rebound. And he gets the basket. 67-60, it's a seven point game. Marvin Gray, give it up to Carson Hepburn. Carson Hepburn now, up top, dribbling the basketball. Gets it down to Ricardo Bethel. And Chris Brown wanted to fall early in that one. They wanted to fall him a whole lot earlier. It was nice to start and go into the basket. Like I said, falling the gates hustle, it stops the clock. Um, instead of the Wildcats defending the last basket CI made, they allowed them to make it because then the clock didn't stop. So, you know, they, I, I think they smell it, but 43.1 uh, seconds, seconds, you still got some time left. To the line is Ricardo Bethel. They call him the War Dog. Missed the shot, 42 seconds, 68.60. Here come the Jacobson Rattlers, the three, nothing there. Ball is loose, rebound to the Wildcats, Ricardo! 70, 60, 24 seconds on the clock. 
And they're still going after the ball, and it goes back to the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. Kind of there was a nail to a coffin. I think that last nail was it, it's a 10-point lead. Hats off to um, C.I. Gibson kids. We they, have seen. Giving it their best, and um, I think they represented New Providence well. It's a 10-point um, difference. Virtually, you can say the game is over. But um, they're going to come back. Most of those kids are going to be returning, and they're going to be a force to reckon with. I tell you, Charles Fisher on the other end of the floor, Fish. The crowd is falling out of the gym, 70 to 60 at this juncture. I tell you what, I guess they figure it's over. Well, Carl, I you know, um, I've been to about three of these finals. I've also been to some um, of our local high school league finals, and I end up getting the title Mark Levy because <laughs> if you don't win the big ones, that's the former Buffalo Bills coach. So. Let's see what's going to develop over the years for Nassau. Let's go to Fisher. Fisher, you were saying? Well, Cardo, the sign says it all. Everybody's heading to the exit door, except for the Jack Haywood Wildcats with 20 seconds left in this game. This one is virtually in the hands of the Jack Haywood Wildcats. I thought Ivan Butler was going to put it in the bench just now, but he decided to stay with the status. Probably to let him celebrate the win on the court. It's going to be fun to see how this works out. 13 seconds left. AZ basket on the inside for Randy Ferguson. They go the distance of the floor. Five seconds. Four. Taking the three-pointer outside. Nothing there. Two. It's history. It's over. The Jack Hayward Wildcats have won the 19th annual Hugh Campbell basketball title taking the trophy again back to Grand Bahama. The C.I. Gibson Rattlers, a gallant, a gallant, a gallant try tonight. And I know for Coach Kevin K.J. Johnson, disappointment, but the bottom line is it was a good basketball game. Well, you know, I'm early in the first quarter. Chris got in trouble in the first half. He had three fouls. And if you reflect back to early in the game, he was really the dominant factor on the board. You know, like I said earlier, one team had the, in terms of a franchise, one team had the big man, one team had the point guard. The big man just didn't show up as was expected tonight. Okay, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we'll hear from the coaches and some of the players. Stay with us. The Jack Haywood Wildcats win it 70-62. to 62. We'll be right back to this Agenda Lizex gym in just a moment. And 
welcome back to the Kendall Isaac Gymnasium. And what a game we saw, folks. 70 to 62. The Jack Haywood Wildcats completing the perfect season. Starting off in Grand Bahama, winning the Catholic High. Also winning the Grand Bahama High School Championship. And now the National Championship, the Hugh Campbell Basketball Championship. Our Charles Fisher is standing by with the winners in the Wildcats. Fish. Hey. Carter, definitely they are the best team and best, definitely we have the two best tandem right now in high school basketball Marvin Gray and Demacio Dim. Marvin early in the game it looked like C.I. Gibson wanted this game but your team had your composure. Your composure. Yeah we all the composure. You know they're coming out tough at us from the first half because they played in the first half. We, we played, we had to think what we was doing, play good basketball, share the ball, pace, slow the ball down and that's how we came out of the event. Coach scored on you early in the game it looked like you didn't want to handle the rock. No, I had to pass it off because they, they had one man on me. So I had to get Marcio into the game. Marcio came out first big. So Marcio, talk about the game. You had a pretty good game. One of the best games we've seen so far in New Camel history. Uh, we just wanted to come out and do our best practice, do what we practice all the season long. Yesterday when I spoke to you, say you're going to do your talking on the court today. You definitely did it. Uh, I wanted to save the talking tonight. <laughs> what do you want to say to the folks right there in Grand Bahama over in Jack Haywood country? I just want to say thanks to all our fans. Love you, Mom. <laughs> I love you too, Mom. <laughs> there you go. Back to Ricardo. Marvin and Tomasa are two of the best players in the country for sure. Thank you very much, Fisher. I tell you what, they're saying hi to uh, that viewing audience. And everybody in Grand Bahama glued to those television screens and to those folks who can watch television to radio as we've been trying to give you the detailed coverage of this whole tournament as it started with day one. We've seen a great series of basketball as far as the Hugh Campbell, the level of play. The kids were not as big as we would anticipate it, but we had some big ball players. We saw some good ball players. We saw some teachable ball players. We saw some learned ball players. This tournament spells where we are with basketball. And I gather from a coach's standpoint, Coach Mackey, you should be happy with what you've seen here, not just in the finals, but in this tournament. Carter, um, it's the Mackey tournament um, just over the last week of basketball we've made a commitment as coaches to support the Valley New Campbell committee because this is all we have I mean and we've just made some recommendations to make it better I just wanted to add I'm not making excuses for CI Gibson but it bothers me too as a coach we've had six regular season games in Grand Bahama this year I know they had the um, Vitamol they had the Thanksgiving they had the Christmas tournament um because you know and, and teams travel and so um the best experience and um, with games on their belt, it, it kind of shows that they're just being in more of these situations, championship situations. But hats off to um, both teams and Sky Gibson. has nothing to be ashamed of. They gave it their best shot. Okay, they are getting ready for the presentation of the trophies. I think Charles Fisher is trying to also get Kevin K.J. Johnson. So until we do get that, I do believe they're getting ready to do that right now. And I believe the presentation is about to take place and having everybody in place again, okay, the media uh, grabbing the players and that is creating somewhat of a uh, disorganized uh, frenzy down there on the floor. But what we'll do is take a break and when we come back, we will in turn give you the presentation of the Hugh Campbell National Trophy. And welcome back to the Kendall Isaacs Gym as the presentation is uh, taking place on center court. Receiving the trophy is the principal, 
is Ezekiah Dean from the Jack Haywood Wildcats. And I'll tell you what, what a day. Let's go down to the announcer on the floor. The most valuable player in this 19 U Campbell basketball classic is number 13, Marvin Gray. 13 points, two rebounds, four steals, four assists. Marvin Gray, the MVP of the 19 U Campbell basketball championship. Presenting the trophy will be the representative from Grand Bahama, the Honorable Eight Mile Rock, MP, the Honorable Russell, Lindsay Russell. Now for the big one, for the championship trophy, the parliamentary secretary of Education, Mr. Alvin Smith, will make the presentation to the winning team, the champions of the New Campbell 19, the from the Kendall Isaacs gym, but the Jack Haywood Wildcats celebrating winning the Hugh Campbell basketball trophy. It goes back to Grand Bahama. We send it back to Chris Saunders in studio. Okay, he's standing by with the coaches, okay?
I got it. I think this is the last one. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Chris, and welcome back to this again to my GM Gymnasium. I tell you what, I'm still kind of goosebumped somewhat because we saw a pretty good basketball game. Well, the Jackie Wood Wildcats won, and for the Sickups and Rattlers, this is one that simply got away. They wanted it very badly, being here before and understanding exactly what it takes to win this one. Standing by is uh, Charles Fisher with the coaches. We're going to get a reaction from him as far as how the coaches are handling the win and the loss. Ricardo, one thing I can say, I've been a good assist man tonight. I have the coach with me, Ivan Butler. Ivan, words cannot express. I know the way you're feeling right now, but tell us about it. Hey, it was, it's all about the kids. They left it all out on the court. See how Gibson came out. We were rattled. I think the environment, playing in front of this large crowd, that had us um, going a bit for a while. But once we were able to regroup, they played a hell of a game. I saw you go on your guards, Marvin and Tommaso, early in the game because you know the game ran through them. Hey, we know. They stepped up all the up for them. KJ had a good game plan. He boxed Marvin early in there, and that's him to rattle us. We never played against any team that boxed Marvin, so that took us for a while to adjust. But once we adjusted, hey, it was pretty good. This must cap, cap off a perfect season. Hey, we can't ask for nothing better. Every kid dream of winning the White Mouth. Every coach dream of being the coach in the tournament, the coach, and to win in the White Mouth. So, hey, we, and besides, we had to wait the free board on our shoulders. We couldn't go back unless we take the champion did for us. <laughs> well, the Bahamas, their flag will be leaving 12 noon tomorrow, and a big parade is planned for Grand Bahamas. We want all the Wildcat fans to come out and enjoy it because it's all about them. They, took us, they, they supported us from day one, and it's all for them now. Congratulations once again, Coach Ivan Butler and the Shaq with Wildcats. We're now joined on the other side by Kevin K.J. Johnson. K.J. must be disappointed. Um, not really. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to coach this team. And, you know, this, we have, I have a very young team, and, and these guys came out ready to play. And um, it showed tonight that um, the Wildcats were a seasoned team. Um, I have a very young team, and we'll be back. We, uh, we're going to refocus our goals for next year and come back. All of Chris, Jermaine, Alex will be back. But the two turning factors in this game, first half, Chris Brown went down with foul trouble. Second half, Alex Smith with that knee bruise. Yeah, and that's 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 unfortunate. And you know, it happens in games. So we, we gotta be, you know, we gotta be prepared for that. The bench came in and tried to do uh, fill in the place, but you know, the, the Wildcats were more seasoned team when they came out, hit the shots when they needed it. Um, we applied the pressure. We made a little mini run there, and you know, they came back and hit some clutch shot when they needed it to cut the momentum. And that's what basketball is all about. You know, 99, you lost to Catholic. How you come back again this year and lose to Jack Hayward? How do you regroup from something like this? Well, like, the game of basketball is, 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 uh, is all about um, knowing what you want and trying to accomplish that. And uh, in life, in basketball, you got to accept losing. You got to accept winning. You know, one of these days, I'm going to get one. And, you know, when that is, it's not my time yet, and when my time comes, hey, I'll be, I'll be ready for it and try to rejoice in that, too. One thing for sure, the CI Gibson Rockets will be back. All five starters on this year's team will be back in the Hugh Campbell Championship next year for sure, Rick. Well, thank you very much. Well, we do have us with also uh, Coach Chuck Mackey. He said straight up play, KJ did. The fact that that's what basketball is about, winning and losing. And the bottom line is they're going to be back. So he's taking this tournament as a learning experience and development as far as his team is concerned. Well, I'd like first to say um, congratulations to Kevin. Um, Kevin is a former player of mine, and um, I'm just so proud to see him out here um, in this championship final. You know, um, 
as I've been telling you um, for most of the broadcast, we just need to take basketball a little bit more serious here in New Providence. Um, taking that away from Grand Bahama, they, 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 they have their program intact. Um, you know, those kids play basketball from 13 and under right on up into high school. Um, as I said earlier this year, we've only played like six regular season games. No way you're going to beat a team like this who have had three major tournaments and their regular season. And um, they just love basketball. But all in all, you know, it just argues well for our young people. I was impressed to see the young men here giving it their all and um, trying to do something positive with their lives. Again, we just need to get more serious and play more games here in Nassau. Well, I hopefully we'll do that. And i tell you what, Fisher, a good series. We've seen the tournament from day one. We've seen some teams go. Some teams have to go home early. Some stuck around. But the bottom line is this. These kids gave me the raw tonight. Well, we're counting from day one. There, there was no clear-cut favorites. We know that the C.I. Gibson Rattlers and the Jack Hayward Wildcats were the cream of the crop. And tonight, the Jack Hayward Wildcats proved that they are definitely the cream of the crop. So number one, when they started off the tournament, was the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. But now they are number two. But they must be disappointed. Kevin K.J. Johnson returns most of his status to next year's team in two including the big man Chris Brown and the sharpshooter Alex Smith. Well, folks, I tell you what, we had a wonderful time here bringing you the championship game of the U Campbell Basketball Tournament. For right now, it's going to be the Jack Hayward Wildcats heading home tomorrow at noon. They'll be greeted by a very large contingent of Grand Bahama Airport, and they'll be able to celebrate for a long time. It's a dream season for Jack Hayward. It started with the Vitamol. It went on into the Capital Guy Invitational, the Grand Bahama Championship, and now the Hugh Campbell. Who will it be next year? The work starts now for Coach Mackey and all those other coaches here in the Providence and in Andres and Salvador, you name it, the work will start. That's it from the U Campbell uh, basketball.